In this section, I'm going to talk about relapse, which is going to be one of the biggest problems in health habit modification. People often return to their old bad habits, and it's just more common in smoking, drug addiction, and overeating problem. So, first of all, we should answer what is relapse. Um, is, for example, a smoking one cigarette or just having one ice cream can be a relapse? And no, it cannot be. It's just abstinence violation effect or the feeling of you are losing control over um, your new plan, over your intervention that you are having. Um, there are going to be like some factors that, that actually can lead to a relapse. For example, for example, your vigilance, it's going to be fade. Um, after a minute, for example, you're going to start with like a crazy, a strong feeling, but like after a point, you feel like maybe, I mean, why I'm just uh, going on a diet? Maybe I don't need to just monitor my sugar intake. Maybe I'm good. You see what I'm saying? Like that kind of conversation that you are having with yourself that uh, might lead to breaking uh, your health habits. Another one going to be negative effect. Uh, for example, we, you are actually feeling insecure if you not a smoke with your friends, because uh, like all of your friends, you are just a smoking um, and you don't want to be single out in um, your friends group. So you do have that kind of uh, negative self-conscious thoughts uh, that might uh, lead to uh, smoking again. So that kind of ideas. It should be um, in your uh, plan, in your treatment plan from the beginning, like, like your therapy should just consider that from the beginning. Uh, here is a figure that actually show you um, how, for example, different kind of perspectives uh, can lead to uh, breaking your habit or just having um, your habit as strong as it was. For example, you are in a high risk situation. Um, all of your friends are smoking. If you would having, if you if you are having a good mechanism, like a a good coping response, uh, you could actually increase your self efficacy, and the probability of having a relapse might decrease. However, if your coping mechanism wouldn't be that much effective, um, it might come with, uh, let's say, decrease in self efficacy, and the probability of having a relapse might increase um so there are like so many different techniques uh for relapse prevention first of all it is like self-talk like the kind of mentality that you have the kind of monologues that you are having with yourself are just very important um like i said for example if you are trying to giving up smoking instead of just saying that oh i cannot do that you can just tell yourself i got this i'm gonna do that um, another problem can be identifying situations that can lead to that sort of relapse um, or like rebalancing your lifestyle. For example, if you are living a bad, unhealthy lifestyle, you can just balance it in a more healthy way. Uh, it seems like most successful people, they are actually perceiving that sort of positive behavior change as uh, as like something that's going to be long term goal, like they, they wouldn't consider that for like one week or like one month. They would just consider that as, for example, their next 10 years or forever. Um, like those successful people, actually, they would consider um, developing coping uh, mechanism to could, um, that would actually help them to manage those um, kind of high risk situation as well. So there are going to be so many advantages when it comes to CBT. First of all, you are the person who going to understand yourself better than everyone. And you're going to be involved in any sort of intervention and techniques that you might apply on yourself. And the skills that you're going to get from CBT can be very important for um, like your future um, habits as well. For example, if you want to like quit smoking for now, but you do have a plan for just running every day, um, you can apply some similar techniques on another positive behavior as well. So, um, based on CBT and so many other behavior changes um, techniques, there is a model um, that they call it like trans theoretical model. Uh, it does have like different stages, like you can see here, it does have at least uh, five stages. Um, the first one is pre-contemplation uh, pre in which like the person, the individual, they actually don't know or they are not aware about their bad habits. Uh, for example, someone who has a problem with um, like 
high alcohol consumption. They are not aware that they are having like 10 drinks in a day. And their family member, actually, they are just pointing out and they're just saying that, hey, maybe you should just stop that. Maybe you are just having a lot of alcohol today. Uh, another one going to be another step going to be contemplation in which they are actually aware of their situation. Now, after, for example, their physician or um, their spouse told them that they are having a lot of alcohol, they are actually observing themselves and they can understand. Then comes preparation in which now they actually identify the problem. They are trying to prepare themselves to just overcome that sort of tackles or they are just able to address that kind of problem, which can lead to the action. So now they are just taking the initiatives. They are just trying to just get rid of that bad habit. But the idea that maintenancing that bad habit is just important too, because they're going to be relapsed again. And we have to add maintenance to our um, plan as well. Here is a model for that. Um, again, it is like the same idea and just saying that all of these stages, they are just very interconnected together and we have to do all of them all together. Uh, so there is another concept here. It's going to be social engineering. It is like modifying your environment or the person's environment to actually uh, just help them to practice a health behavior in a more effective way. Um, there are going to be like several ways for that. Um, one of the important one going to be your doctor uh, or your practitioner, because like the way they're going to start the plan for you, it's just very important. Another one going to be family, like the way your family, your parents or your spouse going to support you, it's just very important as well. Um, on the other hand, the way like, for example, you're going to support your children, you're going to like cultivate that sort of positive habits in your kids as well is important as well. For example, the idea of having breakfast that I mentioned in the beginning, like I guess in the first or second lecture, uh, it can help children a lot to just have a healthy diet from the beginning. School is very important as well. Um, for example, the way like uh, your child's school actually train them to have breakfast or have like physical activity every day or just involve them in like different kind of activity can just help them a lot. Um, so here you can see like more important venues for social engineering, but one of the most important one gonna be mass media or let's say TV. Um, we all know that nowadays, almost everyone, they are just watching like different shows. Uh, the one that, that I already mentioned that in the beginning of the lecture, Euphoria, it's just one of the good ones that actually showing how a relapse might happen in a person. Like the main character, her name is Rue. Um, she is actually encountering so many relapse um, during the like different seasons. I guess Euphoria has two seasons. I cannot remember. It's been forever. The last time that I watched. But, um, or for example, the impact of parental behavior, for example, if, if one of your parents, they do have like drug abuse problem, how it can impact you and your sibling as well. So like that kind of mass media control or the way like mass media are gonna like promote and show the negative aspects of drug abuse or alcoholism is just very important because parents, children, people in the neighborhood, they can later understand the consequences of a bad behavior. So that is all for this uh, week's lecture. Um, so just let me know if you have any questions and uh, read the textbook. I mean, the textbook was okay. Um, in general, it was good, but I mean, I didn't like the way they were just defining CBT or just talking about CBT. I thought there are gonna be more aspects of it that they had to mention that um, I tried to do so in my lecture. So I would say a combination of reading the textbook and lecture can help you a lot to understand CBT. Another point that I wanted to mention is apply CBT in your everyday life. If you have like even a small negative habit, you can use CBT a lot uh, to just address them, uh, especially just so good for like uh, minor depression, minor anxiety or something like that. You literally can Google and just uh, search more and read articles that can address like different problems. And you could just apply those interventions on yourself. Or if you don't know how to do so, you can just email me and I can send you some resources, some articles that could just help you um, like a bit, uh, 